Let's explore the Fog Rift Catacombs. Timestamps are available if you want to skip around. Let's go. There's going to be two stakes of America before the end of this catacomb. So I would recommend you get all of your items that you would want for the boss and throughout the dungeon now so that you don't have to restart to go back to the grace and grab the things you missed later on. Trust me, you don't want to run through this multiple times. This first room has a trap. So what you're going to want to do is get close to it so that it slams down. And then right after it hits the ground, you can run past and start attacking the first enemy. The second one will show up shortly after you start attacking the first one. If you're a spellcaster, this next part's a lot easier since you can knock this guy off the bridge. I decided to use Moog's staff just below the bridge, which has the same effect. You will get another opportunity to fight him later on, but I think it's a lot easier to take him out here. This next room, you have to enter very cautiously since there is a cannon gargoyle that definitely does some damage. This next room has one hidden behind the corner and I choose to take them out preemptively. Step near the edge to get the trap going and then we're going to jump on top of it when it lands. I find the easiest way to take these guys out is to hit them before they hit you. Without their spells, they're extremely easy enemies. This next room has a sneaky guy that's hiding just to the right around the corner. And although these black knights tend to hit like a truck, they also move very slow, so use those opportunities to go in for a crit. From here, we're going to diverge from the main path a little bit so that we can obtain a hidden item. If you look at the corner of the room, you'll see the spike trap shoot down, and there's a small window of opportunity to hop on. Use this to reach the hidden area. From here, you can either jump down or you can run backwards the other direction. Either way, we need to get back to that trap that we used as an elevator to get up here. This time, we're going below it. Level 1 is done, and you get your first stake of America. So from here on out, if you die, you can restart it right at the bottom of this lift.
This next room can be kind of annoying, but just focus the caster first. You don't want to be fighting the other guy while the caster is alive. Unlike the previous traps, these traps that are coming up here won't go down early if you get close. You just need to make a run for it. As soon as you get to the first safe spot, an enemy will drop down, so be careful with that. The next safe spot has a trap hole that you can avoid falling down if you stand in the outer corner. We're going to separate from the main path once again so that I can show you what's down here since there is a pretty cool incantation. This next room will have two casters and a whole bunch of goopy poopies on the ground. Follow this pathway until you're back to where we started. We're going to separate from the main path one last time. There's a lot of hidden secrets in this place. You can stand right about where this caster was, wait for the spike trap to go down, and you can hop in this little insert on the side. But wait, there's more. Instead of writing it down, you're going to want to hop on top of them until you get to this altar on the other side. Then you can follow the path back to the trap room. Layer 2 is done, and the third layer is just for the boss room. I ran in a few times against this boss with a couple different builds and kept getting destroyed, but then I figured out his weak spot. I switched all of my talismans to buff critical damage and charged attack. I didn't have any good crit weapons on me, but considering he seems to be undead, I figured he took extra holy damage. And this weapon has a little bit better crit than your standard 100. I found out that it's really easy to crit him after he finishes his combos or attempts to grab you. After he gets up from those critical attacks, you can wind up a charge attack to hit him as soon as he gets back up. Know that the enemies do have a little bit of iframes when getting back up so you have to time it so that the charge attack hits him right after that ends. The major downside for me in this fight is that I was using a strength dex arcane build and my faith was only at about 56 which is not ideal for this level of difficulty but we made it work. The number one thing to avoid is definitely the grab. On top of it being a one-hit KO 
although that might just be because I'm on max difficulty. It also heals him. Most of his moves are a lot easier to dodge if you dodge forward into them as opposed to dodging backwards away from them. The best time to heal in this fight is definitely after a crit. Instead of going for a charge attack, you can heal up if you're running low. The Ash of War from this weapon also causes him to stagger just like a charge attack, so you can do that instead. I haven't tested this yet, but you can use the Golden Epitaph Ash of War to do about 200% additional damage to undead. I'm not sure if that works against this guy, but it would be worth a shot if you had it in your inventory. One-handed weapons are pretty cool, they can be two-handed to dual wield them. After you use the Ash of War, you can follow up with a power attack that turns into this whirly twirly thing. It's pretty cool. If we missed anything in this dungeon, please let us know. Consider liking and subscribing for more Elden Ring content. Thanks for watching.